we talked about all of we talked about uh if 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 you would mute your phone, it would really be appreciated. Thank you so much. So much. Mute all the lines. Uh we talked we, we talked about that uh this world that we live in, that uh uh there's, there's so many trials and tribulations and during this last year or so with the pandemic uh uh environment that we are living under under it uh it, it begins to be more challenging every day. Uh information that we receive on the news about the vaccine, things that we hear on the news about crime, the things that uh and mass murders. We are we are certainly uh living in a uh trying time and that uh we are all in a chaotic moment, but the just will live by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. We we don't accept the world explanation for what is going on, and we lean only to to God and His Word and His Word that says that we never walk alone. That we rely on the promises of God. We we rely on on God's commandments. We rely we rely on on God's promises, and we stand sturdy. Though the wind and the waves may come, though trials is on every hand, we continue to look toward the hills that comes our help, and our help comes from a gracious God. That's why it is important for the Christian, for the believer, to study the Word of God so that we may be edified, that we may be strengthened during these terrible days, during these times that we live in. We need to stay in the Word of God so that we may be built up and so that we may build up others who may have a tough times, those times that may be even tougher than ours. So, so, so tonight, uh, we're going to be in our faith in a chaotic world too. Last, last night, again, we talked about, uh, that on uh, Romans 8, 35 to 39, that it said, uh, paraphrase, that there's nothing can separate us from the love of God. Uh, we talked about Habakkuk. And uh, uh, they talked about that the just will live by faith. We talked about uh, uh, the definition uh, of, of faith and that we talked about faith is the reality of what is hoped for and the proof of what is not seen and, and that uh, to, we need to exercise our faith uh, is to have confidence and an expectation without visible proof. To exercise faith is to have confidence about an expectation without visible proof that it will happen. That is what true faith is all about. And then we are to look toward the one who is trustworthy. We serve a God who is trustworthy. And unlike man, God is not a man that he should lie not the son of man, that he has to repent. So if we know that God is the omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent God, that we lean not to our own understanding, that we put our faith in, in El Shaddai, the all-powerful God. Tonight, we're going to, we're going to, uh, look at some, uh, Faith that uh, Jesus talked about. We're go we're going to look we're going to look at how how Jesus looked at various areas of faith, and and he talked about how uh, in these various areas that uh, he addressed them as to what he thought about them. So we're gonna we're gonna see what Jesus had to say about it. Uh, I don't know how many of you 
uh, old enough. Uh, I know that uh, Mother Nia and I may be probably the oldest one on the line tonight, but if you remember the uh, news commentator by the name of Paul Harvey, pa Paul Harvey was a broadcaster that came on uh, uh, the news, and, and then he would give us a tidbit about some famous person that uh, uh, we didn't, that, and we were trying to figure out what it was that, and who it was that he was talking about. And then later on, he would say something like, now the rest of the story. Uh, 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 we can relate to that when it comes to the Apostle Paul. When, when, when we look at Paul as being Saul of Tarsus, we know that uh, uh, we met him during a time that he was in persecution of the believers. But he had an encounter with Jesus. And now the rest of the story is that he became the apostle to the Gentiles. He became to be God's advocate. He, he went out and he formed many churches. He was able to do great and mighty acts. He started off in one way, but the rest of the story is the story that now a lot of those things that we do with our church is done because of the epistles that Paul wrote, which means that he wrote about two-thirds of the New Testament. And uh, because of that, he did not let his beginning determine his ending. Uh, 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 in the Word of God, it said, despise not the time of small beginnings. We may start. It's not how you start. A lot of time is how you finish the race. And, uh, and Paul said it like, like this, I fought the good fight. I finished the course. And, and now he knows that he has a crown waiting. And it's not just for him. He said that it's for everyone who has kept the faith and relied not on themselves, but relied on their dependence of Jesus Christ. There was certain kind of faith that was mentioned in, in Scripture. The first one that I want to deal with tonight is what Jesus called great faith. Uh, if, if you would turn with me to Matthews, uh, the gospel according to Matthews, and um, it's the eighth chapter, and we're going to look at the, uh, we're going we're gonna to look at the fifth verse. We're going to start reading at the fifth verse. So let's turn in into the fifth verse. And it said that when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, uh, that was, he came to, he, there came to him a centurion beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lies at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said to him, I will come and heal him. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I said to them, uh, this soldier would go, and he goes. I said to another, come, and he comes. And I said to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Great faith. Jesus marveled at the centurion's faith. Before him stood a Gentile uh, uh, about whom Jesus said, I have, I have not found anyone in Israel so great, with so great a faith. Jesus' kingdom authority and power is available to anyone who put their trust in him. But what made the centurion's faith be so great was his total confidence in Jesus' word. Let me say that again. What made the centurion's faith so great was his total confidence in Jesus' word. You don't need to be a spiritual giant or a person with prominence 
a member of a certain class of people. You only need to know who Jesus is and the authority of his word. You only need to know who Jesus is and the authority of his word. Great faith comes through when we truly understand the greatness of the object of our faith. Jesus was the object of the Saturian faith. The Saturian had great faith, and Jesus healed his servant. Remember, it's the object of what you place your faith in, and we place our faith in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he is faithful. Let's come down in this in this same chapter to verse to verse number ten. I'm sorry. No, we're gonna we're gonna come I just finished verse we did verse number ten. Let's let's go to uh first verse number Verse verse number twenty six. Let's look at verse number twenty six, and let's go up a couple of verses and look at uh, chime in at verse number twenty three. And it says, "When he had entered into the ship, this is Jesus. Uh, his disciples followed him, and behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that that the ship was covered." with the waves, but Jesus slept. And his disciples came to him and woke him and saying, Lord, save us. We perish. And he said to them, Why are you fearful, O you of little faith? Here here we say, see that those that had been walking with Jesus, Jesus I rebuked them and said that you have little faith. Jesus, after he had rebuked the wind and the sea to calm the storm, he rebuked the disciples for their little faith. Jesus wants to expand their understanding of him and that uh, their and their trust in him. He wanted them to understand who he was and that he wanted them to have undying, unwavering trust in him. And as a result, what he did, the disciples were amazed. They were amazed because of Jesus' lordship over his own creation, suggesting that they hadn't fully known who was in the boat with them. Do you know who's always walking alongside of you, suggesting that they hadn't fully known who was in the boat with them. The storms of life and the trials of life are designed to give us a bigger view of God and a more precise understanding of who Jesus is. The size of our faith is ultimately tied to the size of our God. How big is your God? We have to understand that, again, the size of our faith is ultimately tied to the size of our God. Do you have faith in your money? Do you have faith in your possessions? Do you have faith in other people? How large is your faith in other people. God said in his word that you have no other God before him. If God is your God, you have, you should have big faith and not little faith. Let's look at another faith that Jesus talked about. Let's go to Matthew's, uh, the seventh, the seventeenth chapter. Let's go to Matthew's Matthew 17. Uh, we're going to chime in at, at, at verse at verse 14. And it says, 
that here Jesus was come had, had gone on the Mount of Transfiguration with with his uh, inner circle disciples, and and he was coming down to uh, to where the multitude was. And and I'm gonna chime in at 14, and it said that when they had come to the multitude, they came to him. There came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he, lunatic, and sour, and he's so vexed. Uh, he often fall into the fire and, he, and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples, and they could not kill him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I endure you and bring him to me? And Jesus rebuked the devil, and, and, de and it departed out of him, and, and the child was cured from that very hour. He came, he came. Then came the disciple to Jesus apart and said, Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as the size of a mustard seed, you shall say to this mountain, Remove you yonder, and, and, and it shall be removed, uh, and there shall be nothing impossible for you. Little, little, little faith. Now here we are. It talks. Jesus is is uh, talking about the the disciples having the faith the size of a mustard seed. Jesus wants them to understand that they were in the presence of a supernatural work on his behalf, and they were powerless for them to do what Jesus said. It took only the faith of a mustard seed. Those of you who ever seen a mustard seed, that it is so small that it can hide under the, your little fingernails. And, and, and it could not be seen. That is a mighty small, uh, seed, but Jesus said, if you had the faith of that mustard seed, that you will be able to tell a gigantic mountain to move, and it will be moved and tossed into the sea. How, how powerful is that statement that Jesus made? Jesus wanted the disciples to understand that that we are all given a measure of faith, and if we take that faith and act on that faith, it doesn't take much faith. It just know that the power and the importance of the faith that God has given to us. Again, the Bible says that God has given all of us a measure of faith. What are you doing with the measure that you that you're getting? How how often that you look at trials and tribulation and you knuckle down to it without speaking to that problem that you have and telling it that hey, you don't have any authority on me, speak to it with conviction. Now we understand that faith Cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of God. How much time do you spend in the word of God so that you may be able to walk in the power of the word of God? Jesus rebuked them for he said that, hey, this demon that you could not uh, cast out of this young man was no more, that took no more faith than you having the faith of a mustard seed. One of the things that uh, in reading the word of God, the more you read about God, is that faith cometh by 
hearing the word of God than hearing the word of God. Yesterday, we talked about when we were little kids going to school. The way that we learned in school was by what? Repetition. The teacher would come each day as the, as the student was prepared that they would raise their hand and ask a question. A lot, a lot of them was may have been like me, and they, they, did, they weren't prepared for it, so they would sit in the back of the class. But those who were prepared will raise their hand, and 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 uh, 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 what what would happen was that uh, the students would learn because the teacher would go over the lesson over until everybody in the class was able to understand the teacher. That is the same way how we build up our faith. Our faith comes from continuously opening up the Word of God, reading the Word of God, and then 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 we would, we, we we need to meditate on that Word of God. That means to to mull over that over and over again. And then when we start fellowshipping with God seriously, God opens the windows of his knowledge and give it to us. And they say that, that all we have to do is ask, and it shall be given. We need to seek, and we will find. And we need to knock, and the door shall be opened. But those things will only happen when we put forward our faith and understanding that the word of God is God speaking to us and telling us, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So God's Word is God speaking. God's Word is the same as it's God himself talking to you. And the, and the only way that you're going to be able to get the type of power that is in God's Word is for you to step out on God's word and speak to all of the all of the challenges that that we have in life. This was an embarrassing moment for the disciples, so that, so they went to Jesus privately and asked him, "Why? What happened? Why couldn't we drive out the demon?" Jesus answered, "Because of your little faith." Though Jesus had authorized them to drive out demons, they, their trust in God's power was insufficient in this instance. Regardless of your past success, you need to have a present faith. What does such faith need to look like? In order to move a mountain, it must be the size of a mustard seed. You must you must have if you must have that faith that can remove mountains. It doesn't take much, but what it does take is for you to step out and to trust the omnipotent, the omniscient, and the omnipresent of God. To God, all things are possible, and nothing is impossible. Let's look at. Uh, uh, one more scripture. Let's turn to James, the book of James, and the second, the second chapter. And 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 here we're going to start. We're going we're going to start looking at at James, and it's talking it's, it's talking about dead faith. Let's look at it. Okay, it starts. Let's start at, at verse number 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 fourteen, uh, chapter two. It says, "What does it profit a brother and a uh, sister, uh, though a man say to him that he has faith and have not works? Works can faith save him?" Verse fifteen. If a if a brother or sister uh, be naked and destitute of daily food. And one of you say to them, Depart in peace, be you warm and filled, notwithstanding you give them uh, nothing for them, for them which, which they are in need, needful of. 
uh, to the body, uh, what does it profit? Even so, it profits them nothing. So, so what James is saying, so faith, if it has not worked, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, you have faith, and I have works. Show me your faith without your works, and I will show you your faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, and you, and you do well. The devil also believes, and he trembles. But will you know a vain man that faith without works are dead? Faith, if it does not have works, it is dead. It is impossible to have a useless faith that is not accompanying anything in life. In other words, if you have faith and you are not accomplishing anything in, in, in life, it is a dead faith. If you say that you trust God and, 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 uh, uh, you don't act on that trust, it, it you have you don't have the sufficiency that is necessary. You do not have faith because it has no feet. Once you become a Christian by faith alone, your faith has to be married to works. Let me say that again. Once you put, once you become a Christian by faith alone, your faith has to be married to some works. Then what you believe about eternity will become, become real, will, will come real in your history. By works, a man's faith are made complete when he has work. Faith must be demonstrated, not just discussed. It must, it has to be Beneficial. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop there, and uh, we 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 are going to pray. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you praise and honor again for, for for this night. We thank you for those who have joined us. We pray that your word has gone full with power and with clarity. We pray to Heavenly Father that as we continue to look toward you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have not disappointed us and that, and that we know the Heavenly Father that we serve a big God. And as we look at the bigger picture that we are faced with in these dreadful days, Lord God, we look towards you for encouragement, Lord God, and we look for you to work it out. As the caterpillar waits in the cocoon to turn into a beautiful butterfly, so we'll, so we work, we wait patiently and trust you for our faith journey. We give, we thank you, Lord God, for what we've heard. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in our life. So now unto him who's able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceedingly joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Thank you for everyone for joining us tonight on this expectation moment. We thank for all those who are on the Zoom line, those who joined us on the conference line. May you go in love, peace, and joy. For the author of love, peace, and joy go with you. In Jesus' name, I miss you, Father.